What's up all the people on the internet? My name is Mal and this is Daily Plus. Hello, hello everyone once again and welcome back to Daily Plus, your favorite show about everything Eurovision. Today we have a little bit of Eurovision news, a whole lot of Junior Eurovision news and of course this week's Country Spotlight. So without further ado, let's get started. And we are starting with Europe's most Eurovision loving country, Sweden. The Swedish National Final Melody Festival is arguably the biggest national final in all of Eurovision. And now we finally know who will be leading the show next year. Hesse Andersen, David Lindgren and Clara Henry will be the three hosts for Melody Festival in 2017. Hesse and David have both participated in the Melody Festival and before, both reaching the final, with Clara being a green room host a couple years ago in the Melody Festival. And she's also a very famous YouTube blogger in Sweden, having right around half a million subscribers. Are you excited for next year's Melody Festival? The first semi-final of the 2017 Melody Festival will begin on the 4th of February. After failing to reach the grand final for the past two years, the Switch broadcaster now wants to change things up a little bit to ensure another final placing. The Swiss broadcaster is now welcoming singers and entries to be sent in on their website. However, this year there are a couple changes. They have gotten rid of the regional selections and they've also gotten rid of the typical online selection. Meaning if you want to take part in the Swiss selection this year, you have to be a Swiss resident. If you live in Switzerland and want to take part in the Swiss selection, you can do that. You can send in your entry now and you can do that up until the 24th of October. This year, Switzerland was represented by Ryan and her song Last of Our Kind, which sadly didn't manage to get to the grand final. We also have some sad news coming from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like Bosnia and Herzegovina will be able to participate in next year's Eurovision in Kiev and Ukraine. The Bosnian broadcaster do not have the funding needed for the Eurovision Song Contest. And with the national broadcaster being in a bad situation financially, a participation in next year's Eurovision looks very unlikely. This year, Bosnia was able to send a song to Eurovision with the help of funding from private companies. However, according to local media, that will not be happening next year and we will not see Bosnia and Herzegovina in Ukraine. Despite never winning the contest, Bosnia and Herzegovina is definitely one of the fan favorite countries and hopefully we will see them again soon in the Eurovision. Exciting news coming from the EBU, we now have the official lineup for this year's Junior Eurovision taking part in Valletta and Malta. Sensational 17 countries will be taking part in the Junior Eurovision this year, the same number of entries that we saw last year. Three countries have withdrawn, those being San Marino, Slovenia and Montenegro, but we have three countries returning this year, those being Poland, Cyprus and Israel. No countries are debuting this year, but we are sure to see a wonderful show taking place next month in Valletta and Malta. Are you excited for the Junior Eurovision this year? More information about the show and the staging will of course be revealed very soon, so stay tuned on our website for that. Like I just mentioned, one of the returning countries this year is Israel, as they confirmed their Junior Eurovision participation this week. Israel has only taken part in the Junior Eurovision once, and they did that back in 2012. Ever since then there's been speculations if they would return to the contest, especially last year there was a lot of talk about it. But now they are finally back. How they plan to choose their singer and song has not been revealed yet, but given that there isn't much time until the Junior Edition, we will most likely see an internal selection and we will most likely see it within the next couple weeks. Israel took part in the Junior Eurovision in 2012 and they did that with the group Kids RL and the song Let the Music Win. We now know who will be flying the Australian flag at this year's Junior Eurovision and that is the Voice Kids winner, Alexa Curtis. Alexa Curtis was the winner of the first and only season of the Voice Kids in Australia and she is now on her way to represent the country at this year's Junior Eurovision. This is not the first time that we see a Voice Kids contendent on the Junior Eurovision stage. Last year we saw the runner-up of the very same show Bella Page take the stage for Australia with her her song My Girls. We don't know what song Alexa will be singing on the Junior Eurovision stage just yet, but we will most likely hear much more about it in the coming weeks. We also have some news from Georgia, because we finally know who will be representing Georgia at this year's Junior Eurovision. Mayam is the name of the singer singing for Georgia this year, and she was chosen after a nationwide selection went out through all of Georgia to find the perfect singer for next year. What song Mariam will be singing is not known yet, all we know is that it's written by the same composer that has composed almost all the Junior Eurovision entries for Georgia. Last year Georgia was represented by the virus and they managed to score 10th place at the grand final. We finally have some Junior Eurovision songs to listen to and the first one we're going to listen to is from Bulgaria. Lydia Ganeva was chosen as the Bulgarian representative a couple months back and now we finally know her song Magical Day. The song and music video was released on the Junior Eurovision official YouTube page as well as on the Bulgarian broadcast of BNT's Facebook page. You can take a little listen to the song right here and let us know what you think down the comments.
last year Bulgaria hosted Junior Vision and the country managed to score ninth place in the grand final. We have talked about kissing and dancing on this show before. Just last week we saw the official release of the song. Well now we also have a music video which premiered on the Junior Song Festival YouTube page. You can take a little look at the music video right here and let us know what you think down in the comments. Hey world, get up and dance. Could this be the second win for the Netherlands in the Junior Vision? We will find out next month. And finally, we have some exciting news for the 2014 Junior Vision winner, Vincenzo Cantiello. Vincenzo have been working together with the producer One Universe to create his very first album. And you can pre-order the CD right now. The CD is released through the crowdfunding website Music Riser, which means you can help support Vincenzo and the CD by pre-ordering the CD right now. If you want to hear some of the songs or pre-order the album, you can check out the link on our website at escplus.com that gives you all the information you need about Vincenzo's album. Now it's time for this week's country spotlight and we are going to Norway. Norway has only participated in the Junior Eurovision three times, which is not a lot, but just like the other Scandinavian countries, Denmark and Sweden, they do not want to participate in the Junior Eurovision anymore, as they feel like the show is not as kid-friendly as it once was. Norway only managed to get one good result in the three years that they participated. In both 2003 and 2004 they came 13th, but in 2005 they stepped up their game and got third place in the grand final. But what's even more important is that Norway almost saved the Junior Eurovision. In 2004, the show was supposed to be held in the United Kingdom, but they pulled out due to budget issues and the fact that the show hadn't been watched by many people in the United Kingdom. The rights then went over to the Croatian broadcaster, the winner of the first ever Junior Eurovision, but they weren't able to host it either. So with only a couple months until the Junior Eurovision 2004, Norwegian broadcast NRK stepped in and managed to host the show in the small skiing town of Lillehammer. So in a way, you can say that Norway saved the Junior Eurovision from not dying on only their second year. Now let's take a listen to one of the songs that has taken part in the Norwegian national selection. The selection was called Melodikan Prejunia and it actually still runs today. Melodikan Prejunia has been running ever since 2002 and is still a very successful program in Norway. One thing that definitely sets it apart from a lot of the other national finals all around Europe is that all the songs must be composed and written by the kids themselves. The song we're going to be listening to today dates back to 2005. The singers are called Rekke and Malin and the song is called the Trade, which means it is annoying. Well there you go, that's all we have for Daily Plus this week, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, remember to leave a like and a favorite, and click subscribe button to follow all the things going on right here on the ESC YouTube page. If you want all the latest in Eurovision and Junior Eurovision news as soon as it comes out, then remember to check our website, escplus.com. We have news, we have polls, we have exclusive interviews, we have everything we need for your Eurovision fix. And if you want to keep up with what I am doing, you can check out my YouTube channel, It's Me Milo. On there you can find a bunch of vlogs, music and other sort of fun stuff, so check that out if you want. But that's all I have for today. See you next week.